Okay, so for lab 14, we're going to be setting up our ESXi hosts to be joining our domain. I just logged into our vCenter server, and for some reason when I did this, my lab keeps popping up with our disk management. I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of there. Before we totally begin, I want to make sure that our iSCSI software, our Starwind server, is connecting. As long as it says is connected, we are good to go. If it doesn't, I've noticed sometimes it just takes a few minutes, so try again. After the second attempt, if it still doesn't work, try a third or fourth or a fifth time, it will eventually connect. It's just, if you try powering them on too quickly, it gets kind of weird. Okay, so from there, we're going to go ahead and log into our v uh, vSphere. Remember, since our single sign-on is working, we can actually use our Windows credentials. Once we log in, we're going to be setting up our authentication services. Because we are halfway through the semester, you may be getting licensing uh, errors. That's okay, we're going to go ahead and upgrade our server license uh, later. So, once we get in, we want to expand out our hosts and clusters. I know that's where we were already at, but out of habit, yes, we get used to this view, host and clusters. We're going to do the first step on ESXi1, so select ESXi1, go to configuration. Underneath the software portion, we're going to change our authentication services. So once we see it, we're going to go ahead and click on our properties. If you right click on it, we get nothing. So we actually have to go to the top right hand corner, properties, and we're going to set up Active Directory. You're going to fill it in for our domain, vita.local, and we will join our domain. And here in a second, once it updates, it should show that our ESXi hosts are now joined to their domain. That way, our credentials from our domain can actually allow us to log on directly to our ESXi machines. This may take a second. So how do we verify? If we click refresh, domain should be vitted out local. If it doesn't, just click back on properties and you should see Active Directory and it's our domain. Notice our leave domain is there. That's a surefire way to verify that it does work. We're going to apply the same settings on our ESXi2 machine. Configure authentication, properties, Active Directory, bit it out local, join our domain, And it does take a second or two. So with our nested VLabs, I've noticed that sometimes we have issues with over allocating resources. And it's only a slight uh, issue with our port numbers. But we're going to go ahead and do some editing for our part, uh, port numbers. We're going to go back to SXI1. Go back to our configuration tab. We're going to go to our networking, and we're actually going to be manipulating our fault tolerant switch. Because right now it's set to have 120 ports, when in reality we only need a few. So we're actually going to lower it. So how we do that is, once we find fault tolerance, click on its properties. Again, you'll notice 120 ports. We're going to go ahead and edit it. And we're going to change that down to the smallest number we can, which is 8. And we're going to do the same thing on our ESXi 2. Find fault tolerance. Because these aren't distributed switches, we have to do them manually on each ESXi host. And that's it. 
with earlier versions would actually have to do a restart but we don't have to because of this being vSphere 5.5 5. so what happens if we have to manually change our speeds because this is an important one that we do have to look at so let's go ahead and look at our properties for we're already manipulating our fault tolerant network so let's go ahead and do that one again properties network adapter you should be able to see its speed right now it's a thousand megabits it's full duplex but what happens if we have to manually set it if you click on edit we can actually set it 10 half duplex full duplex 100 half full or a thousand full so why not a thousand half duplex that's just not one of the options I'm gonna leave it auto negotiate but sometimes you may have to manually set it the last thing we want to do is we want to mess around with some of our Windows 7 uh, set um, Windows 7 VM settings. We're going to go ahead and expand out our settings for our enterprise version of Windows 7. Notice that our NIC adapter is just a current E1000 NIC. That is not the best NIC that we can use. So we're actually going to go ahead and remove it. Pay attention to the network that it's att attached to. And we're going to add a new network adapter. Except this time we're using the VMX Net 3. If you do not have VMware tools installed on this machine, it will not let you do this. Uh, this is just an all around better adapter. And I'm going to repeat the same steps on our XP machine. Again, edit settings. I'm going to go ahead and remove the previous adapter and I'm going to add in the new adapter. To test it, you'd power them on and verify network connectivity. And that is all for this lab. Thank you.